Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my workshop. Uh, this is uh, by way of an introduction to the next series of videos. Uh, I'm building a uh, copy attachment for the lathe and uh, in order to test the uh, genesis of it I've uh, designed it in Alibur and um, I've pre-cut some uh, MDF into the shape of the main pieces of the copying attachment to try out uh, fit on the lathe and uh, see whether my ideas uh, work in practice. Uh, it's more, uh, it, it's uh, easier for me to explain it on the lathe uh, rather than gibber about here. So uh, without further ado, let's go over to the lathe and add in I'll try and explain what I'm uh, attempting to achieve. Here we are then over at the lathe and basically what I'm going to do is uh, mount two supports like this, uh, which are identical, uh, on the lathe bed such that they fit along across the lathe bed like that, one at either side of the cross slide. Each is braced to the back of the bed by a brace like that which is uh, angled on there or is attached there rather and that holds it in place. Similarly another one up here in between these two um, supports um, is uh, a centered uh, carrier which will take the either the template or uh, say a morse taper or something whatever you're trying to copy the workpiece of course fits in between the centers and then taking off the top slide itself and replacing it with the, this is supposed to be a dovetail but it's square in section uh, for simplicity of uh, making it on the router that will be mounted on the cross slide in place of the top slide uh, but about there and then a, a carrier for the stylus uh, goes on top and that is free to slide backwards and forwards obviously on here and when that's mounted on there the stylus lines up with the center line of this mounting hole here so my hand's not in the way then as the cross slide traverses uh, along the length of the, of the bed across the uh, uh, template or um, whatever you're copying this tool post which is remounted in here under a um, pair of springs which hold it against the uh, work hold in the cell along the centre line of the lathe uh, that um, will progressively obviously by moving the cross slide in follow the template and move back and forth I haven't explained that very well but hopefully it will uh, be, will become clearer as we progress through the project. What we're doing here is uh, over at the router table I've set up a 6mm drill in the router and uh, I'll just tilt this up a bit so you can see I'm going to hopefully produce this part it's slightly different shape because the design has altered a little and the first operation is to drill these two holes um, 
the router is set at the uh, lowest speed I can and uh, I've zeroed X, Y and Z to this corner here or very near the corner and uh, we'll switch it on and see what happens I'll also be running the vacuum at the same time so uh, noise will be pretty horrendous luckily I'm temporarily deaf in one ear but I've still got defenders on right a spindle going on now <laughs> That worked okay. Um, I'm now going to shift the XY 75 mil across, uh, or the X I should say, 75 mil across this way to draw drill another pair of holes for the the second uh, uh, component. I'll do that off camera. Otherwise, it's a bit boring to not watch. Here we are then. The X has now been zeroed over here uh, 70 mil it turned out was be uh, enough so that's what I said it at and we're about to run the program again spin hole on <laughs> Regrettably, I think that drill is a bit duff. It seemed to wander, but no matter. That can be accommodated in the design. Uh, however, I think the grind is not straight, and I'll have to have a look at that later. Now, next job is to change the drill for a uh, brand new single flute cutter and I'm going to try cutting the aluminium with that uh, you'll be as surprised as me if it works okay but uh, let's see what turns out back in a minute back at the router I've changed the drill bit out for a single flute 6 mil cutter this will be run at uh, about 16,000 rpm and uh, it will be the first time I've tried it, so fingers crossed because it's blooming expensive. Um, and I'm about to run the program. Uh, obviously, I've had to alter the Z height, but uh, we'll see what happens when we press the go button. I'll put my air defenders on too.
Now that last little judder in the movement in this direction uh, was because it went through the bottom of the material and hit the um, clamp and that caused it to snatch. Now I'm hoping that if I just get, tap that back against the clamp there I'll be able to recover the situation uh, with respect to the zero here. Time will tell. Uh, some moments later and after having a cup of tea and a think um, back at the router and what I decided to do um, because I couldn't re-register the router exactly and line up the holes in the previously cut piece I thought rather than uh, scrap that bit I put in my last largish piece of uh, off-cut 12mm aluminium uh, in the clamps this time using four so that it wouldn't slide about all over the place and uh, just cut the outline I'll do the holes later on the mill using the DRO to reference off this corner and that way I've saved my last large piece of uh, off cut and uh, the rest of the parts will have to wait until the uh, new material arrives towards the end of this week. Right, I'll take this out of the clamps, take it over to the bench and clean up the edges and uh, we'll see what we got then. Well it's a couple of days later and the uh, aluminium stock has now arrived um, along with some steel for the slide and base uh, and I'm about to uh, carve out the supports. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, according to the computer the uh, whole thing is going to take 32 minutes which is going to be a boring old watch and um, I've got to watch it but you don't have to so we'll start it off, set it running, uh, I'll maybe come back halfway through and uh, fade it in and then when it's all finished uh, I'll bring you back in again and you can see the last few cuts. Here we go. Stuff will be boring two holes. <laughs> Nearly all the way through. Oh, wow. Didn't like that. That should be the worst of it over. Here we are then, about uh, 17, 18 minutes later. First one's done. Nearly went through. I'm going to have to try and jiggle the uh, Z position in order for it to break through completely. But uh, I'm not too worried about that because that is providing some support to the structure. Um, however, I'm just about to uh, restart. Let me just try and... Uh, uh, I don't know whether I can jog it about a bit. Yes, I can. Um. Right. 
fast forward uh, oh, about 24 hours because when I came to do the second uh, cutout here um, I tried resetting the zero the uh, Z height rather slightly lower so that it cut right through and that was unsuccessful and when I came to restart the program it wouldn't so um, it was getting late in the afternoon so I stopped there went back to the computer uh, and I've rerun the program to give me a slightly different uh, uh, NC CNC file which now will hopefully pick up where I left off if I've got everything right and um, uh, I've adjusted it so that I've made the cut half a mil more uh, I've also increased the uh, depth of cut to half a millimeter I am hoping that that's not going to be too much and also you may have noticed when it got to about here it suddenly sp speeded up a little uh, that's because I had the ramp speed which is where this the, the, the ramp in starts in this short section um, the ramp speed was slightly higher than the cutting speed so I've equalized those and now it should be the same speed all the way around the cutout uh, right well I'll do the same again start it up let it run for a couple of cuts and then now uh, we'll come back when it's when it's finished that's if it all works out right right off we go just a couple of mouse clicks here um, spindle on <laughs> I think you can possibly see that it did actually go through this time uh, and all I'm left now is uh, to break the tabs off uh, it took the half mil depth of cut quite well the chips were somewhat bigger but by golly it did not make a mess uh, I shall be a while hoovering up this lot uh, so next time you see it it will be on the bench and I'll be cleaning it up back on the bench then and I've cleaned these uh, supports up uh, I actually measured the uh, thickness of this material and it is in fact 12.5 millimeters thick not 12 as uh, was advertised and as purchased um, and consequently um, the hole didn't go through this hole didn't go through and uh, of course the first one you saw uh, didn't pierce the entire depth and took an awful lot of hacking about and uh, cleaning up to get it right but never mind uh, next time I'll remember to uh, measure the thickness of the material and not rely on uh, the advertised size so there we are that's the four uh, six rather basic uh, items cut out 
the support braces, the supports and the support clamps. These I've done in, uh, I think I pressed said previously, in steel uh, because I'm going to drill and tap those and I didn't think the aluminium would be up to the job. So that's it for uh, episode one. Um, next will be the slide and the base. I think I'll probably do the base first materials on the surface grinder because uh, that's uh, a little bit tatty so I'll just uh, shave a few microns off that make it look pretty and um, well that'll be for next time so uh, if you have been thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time bye bye